Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint some lilacs in a glass vase. We'll be using acrylics and I'll show you step by step how to do it uh, all the way from start to finish. Uh, so let's get started. All right, uh, this is my reference image. I really liked um, the whole composition. I liked having the different colored lilacs in it. Uh, so we're gonna be using that. I got that uh, off of the website Pixabay. Um, it's a royalty free website. So if you're looking for the reference, you can find it there. I'm going to set that aside there. Put my thing. I'm going to be using a can Cantone uh, Frederick's canvas. This is a nine by 12 inch. Uh, panel. It's pre-primed with some gray paint, so it'll be all ready to go. I might have to zoom out a little bit here. There we go. So you can see the whole thing. And <laughs> I've been away on vacation, you know. <laughs> Let me go over our brushes real quick with you. I've got some 6100 uh, series brushes that I'll be using in Princeton. Um, donated our brushes for tonight's show. These are the number 12 bright, number four bright, and I think we'll use a number two bright possibly. Um, just a few small flats. The bright's just a little bit shorter. Here's the number two flats. You can see the difference between the two flat and the two bright. Flat is a little bit longer. So we might use that too. I have that one out. And then uh, I've got number two round and number two aught round. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, just so, so like a couple of small rounds, sort of medium and a small round. And then I've got a couple of filberts. This one is the number six select brush, and this is the number four filbert. Uh, it's a little bit bigger in the 6100 series. And then we'll need some sort of uh, fan brushes, or um, this is the Bristle Bright uh, one and a half inch for some of the wood textures that we'll be doing on the background. Possibly a credit card. I don't know. I think we're going to probably use it a little bit to scrape on some stuff in the background here. And then some good uh, paper towels because we'll be doing some texturing with that too. All right, let's go over our colors real quick. We've got zinc white, uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium, yellow medium, yellow oxide, thalo green, yellow shade, thalo blue, green shade, ultramarine blue, light ultramarine blue. That's just ultramarine blue plus white. Uh, dioxazine purple, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And if you're looking for any of these materials that I went over so quickly, you can look, find them down in the description of the video, uh, as well as links to my Amazon store and the brush guys where you can get uh, a 5% discount if you use the code Angela Fine Art to buy your brushes. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can without going too fast. Just, it is a Tuesday night, hashtag feed Mark. So I've got my husband Mark with me tonight. Hey there, everybody. He's man and chat for me as usual. And uh, try to get him some food here at some point tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Promise, yeah. <laughs> promise has been made in the past. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make a black. I'm using burnt umber, ultramarine blue in equal parts. And I added a little bit of purple to it this time. So just a little bit of doxazine purple, and I'm going to make a line on my canvas about at the quarter mark. So if you find the halfway mark, and then come down a little bit from there, uh, and just do a line across, uh, like some roughly there. We're going to use a credit card and scrape down, and we could use a brush for this really, it doesn't matter, but this credit card will just help. Let's make a straight line. I'm just going to smooth on some dark color down the bottom half of our canvas here. Probably did not put out enough of this. Let me see if I can just use my brush to smooth it out. Using it sideways like this kind of can help you create a smoother straight line too. So kind of trying to get on its side instead of doing it like this or trying to brush it this way. Just kind of using that flat edge. 
I find it's easier. Okay, so we just want a little bit of darkness back there. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw in our vase, and I'm not gonna even worry about that wet paint. Our vase is going to be right about the halfway mark uh, is the top of the vase, and it does this kind of hourglass shape. So it comes in a little bit, and then it flares out a little bit. And I'm just using regular school chalk here. And I'm just gonna go right over the top of that wet paint, it doesn't matter. And run it like that. And wipe it off on my towel. And then the lilacs are going to kind of come down here. So we thought this would be a good Mother's Day gift since Mother's Day is this Sunday in the US. I don't know if it's a worldwide thing, I, do I doubt it, but it's always a good time to celebrate moms, right? So even if it's not, you can do this for your mom. Amen. Or yourself. <laughs> if you so choose. Or whoever. Your or whoever. Sister, your sister, aunt. Aunt, yep. Grandmother. Friend. Hey, guys like flowers too. You don't leave This that is true. <laughs> Grandfather. Dad. <laughs> All right, so I'm just... Well, the dad's out there like, finally. <laughs> flowers. She got the hint. All right, I'm drawing these random uh, rounded shapes here. They're not perfect circles. They're kind of... Uh, the ones that are facing us are almost like uh, squares or diamond shaped. Like this one's kind of a diamond shape. This one sort of does a diamond shape here. This one's like a big rectangle almost. Uh, this one is sort of more of a cone shape right here, like a triangle. And then there's some other flowers kind of tucked in behind. There's sort of two right here. There's one that's kind of pointing up this way and curving down a little bit. And if you don't have a gray canvas, just, just paint your background gray to start with. Uh, use that ultramarine blue and um, and burnt umber mixture and add some white to it and just paint in your background gray. And that'll give you a head start on this. And really probably could have waited because I'm gonna have a lot of this covering up what I'm gonna do next, but we'll see. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the uh Unbleached titanium, a little bit more of our burnt umber here. I'm going to make a brown, like a light brown color. And I'm just streaking through the, the area that had the darker color in it until I get some interesting kind of streaks. I don't want to mix it too much. Uh, and then I'm going to, right about where that vase is, I'm going to kind of do this sort of a wide board right there. And then this one is gonna be kind of coming out this way at an angle a little bit. And then this one's gonna be angling out this way a little bit. And this way. So the perspective is getting closer to us right here. These ones are narrowing and kind of going away from us this way. So I'm going to use the width of this brush and just lay it almost flat and very lightly drag it down to the bottom. Don't worry about this line up here right now because we'll, we'll clean that up later. So just do like this. We're just trying to kind of create sort of a wood texture and having the paint not all the way Not all the way mixed on my brush will give me some streaks that I'm going for here on my wood. How's chat doing, hun? It's doing great. Everybody's coming in saying hi. Good. Got a few first time live viewers. Well, welcome to them. Yes. Thanks for making it tonight. Yeah. 
Thanks to everybody who's new, just discovering Angela. We invite you to subscribe. <coughs> wow. Subscribe? Yeah, I'll try that again. We invite you to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm not even in my art brain. I can't talk. <laughs> You're not even in your art brain. Yeah, like um, very rarely am I. Yeah. So. <laughs> true, true that. True that. Yeah. Subscribe. You can check out her channel. Look at the few hundred videos she has. All types of topics. Yeah. Ranging from beginner, kid level, all the way up to more advanced. Yep. Levels. Something for everybody. Hopefully. If not, wait a few weeks or months and there'll be a few more paintings. Yeah. Yeah, we do twice a week, so. And really, you know, we're all about just kind of my... I had difficulty when I was learning to paint. Um, so I've been painting for about 30 years now and uh, just kind of worked out some of the kinks to working with acrylics uh, through discovery and trial and error. And that's what I like to share with my audience is just kind of trying to make the process of learning to paint a little bit easier and uh, fun, give you some projects that are doable and achievable. Okay, so we're getting we're getting there here with our wood board. It's starting to look like wood. We added a little bit of light streaks to it. Just gonna add that element there, and then I'm gonna switch to a little bit smaller brush here. Let's get this kind of middle middle bright color or middle bright brush with number four bright, and I'm gonna use some of this brown. A little bit of the ultramarine blue. I really need to make some dark color over here by itself, away from that white that's been mixed in. There we go. Just using a paper towel to kind of wipe off the extra. And I'm gonna go in, let's go ahead and grab some of that purple too. I'm going to go in right here and darken up these cracks now that I know that's where I want them to be. Darken up. Those boards. So we're live tonight. Yep. We're live this coming Saturday. Yes. Next Tuesday. Yes. What are the plans? Next Tuesday, we'll be mm -hmm. live again. Okay. Why? Did we not have plans to be live? Or well, are you, you just asking? Well, you know I won't be here, right? Oh, that's right. You won't. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we'll... Maybe Spencer. I'll, I'm going to try to talk Spencer into doing it. If I can't get a co-host, I guess we'll have to not do it. But just we'll stay it. tuned, and I'll I'll be posting that in the group. We'll do some on-the-job on on training and... Saturday. Teach them how to run the board. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So that, yeah. Because I'd hate to miss another. Because then we're going to miss again in June when we go away for our anniversary. So... Just one week, but or one Saturday, but still. Man, all, this all right, traveling. just adding a little bit of dark all along this wall and in the cracks between the boards. And I'm going to grab that light color again. What were you saying? All this traveling? I know, yep. But your travel is more fun than mine will be. Yeah, mine wasn't for work. Mine was for fun. We did have fun. We went to Shaky Knees and festival in Atlanta, Georgia. Listen to some good live music. Hung around a bunch of young people. For <laughs> Actually, there was a lot of people that were closer to my age, so it wasn't too bad. A lot of 40-somethings there, too. But you did notice the drastic reduction in man buns since the last there was a drastic yeah festival. maybe it's a more it's a georgia th trend i don't know there was mm. not as many man buns as there was in beale street last year so 
maybe the trend is dying. Who knows? <laughs> you can only hope. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, grabbing some burnt sienna here, and I'm going to make a kind of a knot over here with this. I'm just going to use the corner of my brush and just draw in some little streaks. Okay, let's use the fan brush too. Let's see what that looks like. So you can get a little bit more control with the fan brush. Get some long streaks. What I want to do is get a little bit of light color in between right on the edge of those boards where the dark happens and that way it'll pop the the boards forward in that spot you know make them look more dimensional where they're meeting that dark edge of the shadow in between okay so we have a question yep. about shadows okay how do you know what colors to use when you're doing shadows? Um, well, you know, a lot of a good rule of thumb is just uh, using cool colors. So green, so blues, purples, always work well because um, they're going to recede from you. You don't have to go all the way dark with them to make them already look, you know, kind of like they're going away from you. Um, what I mean is, you can use kind of a medium blue, and it'll still look like a shadow. Whereas, you know, uh, you don't have to use black, you know, to make things look dark or farther away. But I don't know. I just kind of look and see what I, what I can kind of find in the photograph that I'm look, working from and try to pull out the colors that are underneath and between and, uh, from there so I'm gonna leave this for now I don't want to do too much detail on this and then we'll go ahead and work on the background a little bit um, so I'm going to use my paper towel scrunch it up here get some of the white and grab some of that brown ish gray color that I have over here let me grab a little bit of more of that blue a little bit more of the burnt umber I want a gray similar to this background color, but just a little bit darker. And I want to scrunch up my paper towel so it's got some interesting shapes happening. And I'm going to grab a little bit more white, tap that in. You can kind of twist it to smush that color in, and I'm just going to touch it on the background around my flowers and in between create this a little bit different kind of texture for the wall back here and really you could do this over the whole thing and then do your then do your drawing over the top that's probably a good idea okay got a color question Mm -hmm. um, if they do not have the yellow shade, can they use the thalo green blue shade? Yes. Okay. Yes, just use it and um, just just add some um, yellow to it, and it'll make it more yellow, more closer to the yellow shade. It's and, pretty easy. And there will be a five-yard penalty assessed. <laughs> What? There's no penalties? No, no penalties. Just, ow. I can't get this thing open. You want me to do it for you? I don't know. You need the muscle? I might. I, I'm just trying to, okay, there we go. I got it. I got it. I'm already just my hands. It's a good thing I didn't work on my nails today. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I thought about it, but... They got pretty beat up this weekend. Okay, so I've got that gray there. Just made some more of that gray. I'm just going to go ahead and rub that on my paper towel. Grab some more of that white. Smush it in. There we go. That's closer to the color I wanted. This was a little bit too brown up here. 
this is close to kind of like a even if like if you had a sponge you could do something similar to this um, the thing with the paper towel is sometimes you can get kind of more angular um, if you get it even if like you used a paper sack like a like a garbage or like a you know like you get from a grocery a store like a garbage bag a garbage bag do they still lunch bags still? lunch bag yeah there we go that's what i'm talking about um you'll get even more crisp edges than this than you would with the paper towel so you get some interesting shapes and things happening okay that's good i'm gonna get some why you just want to make sure that you get it all you know in all of the areas that you are going to be having your flowers you know so you don't have any gaps once you put your flowers in I'm just gonna put some of the lighter color on top and I'm don't worry about going over your dark hair we can cover that up I think that'll be good enough You can wet your paper towel down a little bit if it's not going on smoothly enough for you. Just a little bit. It'll help it kind of soak in better. Maybe. to the vase too so kind of go over your lines a little bit there we go alrighty so now I'm going to grab that dark color that I mixed with my flat brush I'm just going to clean up that line and just use your finger to kind of pull it down into the area down here so that it kind of gradually fades down into your wood grain. I said yes to this question, so hopefully you will too. Okay. Could they use a sponge? Yeah, I, I, I think I said it. Maybe I, I meant to say it if I didn't. Maybe you did. If I was paying attention, I would have known. Okay. Sorry. Well, that's okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Just darkening up those lines again. Going across there with that really dark. You just want a nice and dark shadow underneath where that underneath your vase and underneath the, this line that's going to go across here. So I'm going to grab some of the unbleached titanium. We'll brush that in a little bit and we're just going to do a line straight across here. Just use the width of the brush. Don't push down too hard. You can get a nice line. If your, brush, if your paint breaks up like that, you can pick up a little bit of water, not just on the tip. Just just tip the very tip of the brush into the water, and then go to your palette and pick up the paint, and it'll it'll hydrate your brush. You just want to keep it um, your brush hydrated. You want to pick up water almost every time that you pick up your paint. You know, just a little bit. That will make uh, your painting experience a little bit easier. You'll have less you'll have to reload your brush less often, and you'll use less paint. I'm going to grab a little bit of that unbleached titanium, just kind of skimming it on the tip of the brush, and I'm going to brush that across the top of what I just did very lightly so that I, it catches on the texture of the canvas. I have very little paint in my brush here. And the paint underneath is still wet, so it's kind of mixing with it a little bit. You can wait till it's dry if you want to and do more of a dry brush look. It's, it's up to you. Okay, so that's pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and call that 
good enough for our wood grain. And we can go back in and use a liner brush um, if you want to, something like this, and draw in some specific little veins in our wood, or some like knots and things, um, just with the very tip of your brush. Sometimes it looks good to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put a shadow back here once that paint's dry. I don't want to mess with it too much right now. So I'm going to put a couple of knots in with my brush here while I've got it. Just a few lines. And just remember, these the grain's running towards you, so these lines are going to kind of come in a, a line towards you for the most part. Let's start filling in our flowers. So I'm gonna switch to my filbert. This is the number four filbert, and we're gonna do some greenery first. So I'm gonna use the phthalo green, and I'm gonna grab some of the brown, the burnt umber, mix that together, and make a nice dark, deep green color. I'm go really dark at first because I want some nice deep shadows down in here. See how dark that is in there? We want to get those in first and then we'll put some light highlights on top. So I'm just going to dab in some green and I'm going to use the edge of my brush to draw out some leaves from in between the flowers here and there. Maybe some stems where I can see some of them happening. I'm going to go underneath all of these flowers, most of them, and there's some leaves down here, there's some down here, what you at? Oh, okay, thank you. Will you wash those out? Wash them out. Well, I just, it's got a lot of paint in it. Okay, I will. Thank All you. Um, yeah, just mostly that one. But okay. Thank you. So I gave Mark a chore. He was trying to take my brush out of my water there for me. You really shouldn't leave your... Well, somebody was like, don't forget to take your brush out. I know. Well, that's a good thank you. I need to remember that because I don't, I don't do that as much as I should. And I let my brushes, if you let your brushes sit in the water too long, they swell and then they split. The, the paint splits. It doesn't damage the brush really. It just makes them look bad and it's probably not great for them either. But Okay, so I'm going to use some gray. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to add this gray to this area here. If I can grab some of that background gray color. Some of that brown. I'm going to pull down this color down into the vase. And I'm really not worried about doing it solid. So go ahead and let all these kind of streaky things happen. That'll just add to the overall look of it. You know, you want some dark areas and light areas. So don't, uh, don't do this too cleanly, if that makes sense. You know, go ahead and sort of be messy about it a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of white down here. A little bit lighter color at the very base of it. Right there, kind of an oval shape. And I'm gonna grab that. Let's go and grab some purple and mix it with my green. I'm gonna use it over here. Shadow that side of the vase with some purple. 
I'm just trying to kind of get these symmetrical. What you can do is draw it out on paper first, draw your vase out on paper, and then uh, transfer the drawing onto the dried canvas once you, you know, get your uh, get your background done. Sorry, I got a brush in my mouth here. Once you get your background done and you think you're ready for your vase, uh, if you've drawn it out on paper, then you can just kind of set your drawing over the top and uh, trace it onto your canvas with some uh, tracing uh, graphite paper. And you won't have to... Uh, Thank you. Appreciate that, Anne. You're welcome. Okay. And then you won't have to worry about, you know, getting your vase symmetrical. You can just fold your paper in half uh, and trace one side and then open it up and you'll have it equal on both sides. I hope that makes sense, but I'm sure you can figure it out. And I get questions about tracing all the time. If you want to learn how to trace uh, and use graphite, there's a, I've got a feather drawing video. It's called feather, I think it's just feather drawing video. Um, and uh, I show how to do it. I show how to draw feathers and then I show how to transfer onto the canvas. So I'm just kind of putting in some dark areas where these, I see these uh, bright stems crisscrossing over here so there's just putting in all these little shadows in here well we can put some highlights on top later but right now I'm just gonna finding the dark areas and putting those in don't worry about any of the light areas yet okay I'm gonna do some leaves down this way if you want to get a nice clean edge on your leaf you need to press your brush flat, have enough water in it. Just make sure that, that the bristles are coming together. If they're not coming together here, they're not going to create a straight edge there. So it's one of the reasons why I advocate um, getting good brushes because a good brush will hold a point better for you. It'll stay together and uh, create smoother lines and things when you want them. And sometimes you want fuzzy edges, but times when you want clean. All right, I'm going to just clean up that edge, trying to make sure that I've gotten this and that about equal there. Okay, some of these are going to come all the way down into the white part that we did. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me go ahead and actually I'm just going to go ahead and paint it in. I won't dry it again. Trying to get all of that color out. So I'm going to grab some purple and some of my quinacridone magenta, about equal parts. Make a really deep violet color. I'm going to use that underneath this these pink lilacs that are down here. And I'm pretty much just going to fill in wherever they are. So anything that's left not green, we're going to put in this purple in this black bottom area and I'm going to go ahead and bring it all the way out to about right here and just tap it in and kind of follow uh, kind of an irregular outline. So I don't want it to be too perfect. 
Most of this is going to be covered up by the other colors that go on top. But every now and then they're going to see these little pockets of this really dark color in here. So I don't have to go all the way out to the very tip of the flower. I'm just really trying to kind of catch the middle part of the flower with this color. Okay. This is just the pink flowers here that I'm trying to find. So. And then for the ones that are up here, the more blue ones, I'm going to grab more of the ultramarine blue and the purple and use those that color. Some more blue violet color up here. Those are going to right here, right here. And there's a big one that kind of comes right up to here. And one that's right here. So you should end up with this kind of weird haircut, you know, it almost looks like clown hair, right? You know, you've got this weird thing going in and out, in and out. That's, that's what we were looking for. We don't want it to become this big round blob of sameness. You know, that's what will kind of kill the realism. So we want these kind of spiky things happening uh, out in different directions. All right. And then for the white flowers, we've already got that green down there, so we really don't have to worry about them. So let's make a little bit of light green. I'm going to use some phthalo green and some yellow oxide. So you have like a purplish flower and you have like a bluish flower. Right. In there. Okay. The white ones will be where I kind of put some of that green. I'm going to zoom in just so people can kind of see the contrast sure, sure. there. Having a hard time seeing it. Uh huh. Yeah. So this one, up, these ones up here, had the ultramarine blue and purple, and this down here had the quinacridone magenta and purple. No white added. Just straight. We wanted really, really dark. All right. So now I'm going to add a little bit of this light green over the top of some of these areas. Now that I know kind of where some of my leaves are going to be, because I've put in my light colored flowers, or you know that kind of started those out. I'm going to. Add a little bit, little touches of highlights to this. I'm going to add a little bit of stem to my, I'll grab a little white here, add. So this is just phthalo green and yellow oxide mixed together. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in. I want to do this before I put in my upper layer so that it'll disappear down into the background. You know, we're trying to do kind of work from back to front. So we're kind of getting those shadows. Then we're going to work in our stems. And then the very last will be those highlight colors that are on top that will bring everything forward towards us. So let's put in some colors where we want some more greenery happening. There's going to be a white flower back in here, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of light color. Just picking out where some of these highlights might go. And I'm going to do some kind of crisscrossing action where some of these white lilacs are going to be. Where we're going to see some stems and things. 
and there's a little bit of highlight on that one. Might make that a little bit longer, bring it down a little bit more. Too, too light. I had too much white in my brush there. I'm gonna... So, which brush were you are you using right now? Uh, the Filbert number the, four. Filbert. The Filbert. Filbert. I think it should be two names. Filbert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to liven things Just up. Just to annoy me. <laughs> 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 Maybe. Maybe you just, just stop just and check think. In, just making sure we're on the same page here. Yeah. Just I mean, that's a criteria, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but down below the description, mm -hmm. down there's a list of all your materials. Yes. She's got some some deceiving numbers down there. She's actually using a nine by twelve canvas. I am. Not twelve by twelve. That's down in the description, so we'll try to get that. Oh, fixed. did I say twelve by twelve <clears throat> in the description? Mm-hmm. I think I meant to do that, and I didn't. Well, let's start over then. No, too late now. Well, I'm not getting what I paid for. I did get some 12 by 12s in, and I was going to do that. I mm -hmm. forgot. Yep. No. So, okay, well, sorry, guys. You could do this on 12 by 12. It'd just be wider. You just have more room to to pull these flowers out to the sides more. I think that's what my thinking was, was that I'd have more room for, you know, making the flowers more full. Okay, so I've made a yellow, uh, green with the yellow, cadmium yellow, medium, uh, and a little bit of white, and just uh, adding it to my green that I have over here already. And I'm going to put in some highlight greenery over the top. Just trying to catch the edges of some of these leaves to make them look like they're coming forward. And some of these are gonna be inside the vase and some of them are gonna be going outside, but it doesn't really matter. They're gonna look for pretty much the same. I'm going to add some highlights over the top of some of my stems that I've already kind of put in here a little bit. Oops, right there. So I'm just very lightly kind of brushing, uh, touching on top, I want to leave all that darkness underneath there so that it looks like it's rounded. So I'm just trying to catch, figure out where some of the stems are crossing over one another and adding a little bit of highlight to some of them. There's really not very many highlighted leaves in this face. They're pretty dark. This one is pretty dark down here. I'm gonna add a little, little teeny tiny, if I can just use the edge of my brush, I'm just gonna to touch a little, little highlight along the middle of that vein there and that leaf. And we're definitely doing kind of more of an impressionist style. So the whole idea is not to get too fussy with any one uh, detail, you know? Probably the most detailed we're going to get is right in here. This will be our focal point. We'll put in some really detailed flowers, but everything else will be a little bit kind of soft focus. Um, so don't get caught too much up in, uh, you know, making anything, any one detail perfect. We kind of want these soft edges, sort of the rough, um, you know, you're not really sure what's happening in there. It's not really defined fully. Um, we're using some of the lighter green now, or some of the brighter green, the yellow green here. And just adding different little details in here. Definitely don't want to get rid of all my dark, dark green though. So just be careful not to do that when you're doing this because the tendency is to get going with these upper layers and do more and more and more and more detail on top of what you've already got there. And then you end up with, uh, you end up with a a very medium colored, you know, you've got no depth. 
because you've covered up all of your dark areas. So just make sure that you leave your really dark areas in here, some of them. Just gonna add back in some dark. And we're gonna put some highlights around the sides of the vase, so don't worry about that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple of leaves right here on the ground. There's some leaves that had fallen down here. And also some flowers, so I'm gonna grab some of that dark blue, purple blue color and put that in right here. A flower kind of setting right in here on the ground. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to switch to my little bit smaller filbert, I think, so we can start kind of putting in some of our more detailed. Uh, things, more detailed details. <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab some yellow oxide and that burnt umber. Mix more of the yellow oxide than the burnt umber. And I'm going to use this to highlight some of these stems down here. Just do another little bit of layering of color in here. There's some of this kind of yellow or, or orangey kind of color on some of these back here. You can use a little bit of the unbleached titanium maybe even and add even brighter just in a few areas. You're seeing the bottom of some stems down here, cut edges. And then right in here, there's some sort of a, I think there's a flower in the water maybe. Okay. And once we get kind of the greenery kind of where we want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of white. And I'm going to use it to create a water line. And I'm going to mimic this curve here. So I'm going to do just kind of a gentle curve. Right about in there. And I'm going to use my finger to kind of dull it in places. I don't want it to be too bright. This leaf's kind of over the top. This one is too here. Did I just drop oh, my chalk? Let's see a little bit there. Okay, so you're not seeing all of the line all the way across, but that's about as much as we want to see. And then I can... Clean that out. I'm gonna grab some yellow, add a little bit of it to the, pick up a little bit of that green. So I've got the bright yellow, a little bit of white, and a little bit of green. Wipe that off, and I'm gonna use it to create a bright highlight on. Actually, I need to put in a little bit thicker stem right here on this one. And there's some leaves in the water down here, it looks like. Grabbing some of that dark green, I'm going to darken up that one side of it so it's got some depth. And then if you got your white line over any of this, we can kind of clean it up, make sure that, you know, this white line is disappeared, has a good 
clean edge. Now I'm going to grab that yellow and go back over that line one more time. There we go. Bring out that one stem there. Maybe put a little bit of yellow on this one too. Okay, and then I'm going to use a little bit of that yellow right up in here, really bright. Yellow, white, a little bit of green. So I'm just kind of touching in to the green we already had mixed, but it's mostly this bright yellow white color. And I'm just going to touch it in on a few of these leaves that I want to pull forward out of the greenery. Use it right on the edge. I can use my finger to just kind of blend off the back end. And then I'm going to use a little bit of it to start creating my white flowers. So some of this yellow is going to be in these lilac that are white, this yellow green color. I'm just going to start lightly doing these kind of little cross hatching petals. This is actually going to be on top of the darker color, so I don't want to do too much right now, but I did want to put a little bit of it in. Let's go ahead and put a little bit down here because there's some white that's coming down this way. And then we'll highlight this leaf right here. Got some brightness right there. All right, let's go ahead and zoom way in right up in here, and I'll do these these dark. Is it kind of glitching? Seems like it's glitching a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is the ultramarine blue. The light ultramarine blue is going to be kind of our base color for these petals. This was, we added a little tiny bit of purple. So I'm mixing kind of a medium blue. But the light ultramarine blue is just a pre-mixed color. It's just ultramarine blue plus white. So you don't have to go out and buy it. Unless, like me, you like to use it a lot. And, you know, <laughs> I, I tend to use it a lot. It's just more convenient to have some of these pre-mixed colors. Because then you have the exact same color every time. You know, you know, you know kind of where you're starting from. So, um, it's just a little bit more convenient. But it really does not have to, you know, it does not matter. You can mix some up. You could put some in a jar and save it, you know. Ooh, super chat. Nice. Thank you. Okay, I've mixed so, in some of this. What? Go ahead. I say we're so zoomed in, I can't see the lights on the screen. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. I uh, mixed some of the dark purple. Uh, I still had some of that ultramarine blue and purple, uh, so I mixed that in with the uh, light ultramarine blue over here too. So it's a little bit more purpley. Who's our super chat from? Super chat is from Carol. Yep, Carol. And she says, "Thanks, Angela, Mark. Missed you both Saturday. Glad to." Glad you you had a great trip. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Carol. Yes, Appreciate thank the you support. Very much. That's awesome. We really do. We did. We had a fun time. It was we, it was very nice weather. We not not me and the we. No, not me. We me and my friend Margaret went. Mark stayed home with the dog and the kids. So. <laughs> Mark's Mark's not a <coughs> not into the live music like I am, so he he lets me get away once a year to <laughs> to escape <laughs> with my friend who also likes live music. So this is our third year to do it, and normally we just go to Memphis, which is about three hours away. But this time we went to Atlanta, which was nine hours away, and 
that was a long drive, but it was definitely worth it. It was a lot of fun. And Atlanta was a nice, <laughs> nice city. We had good weather. All right. I am going to get back to tell them what I'm doing here. So this is kind of uh, probably two shades, maybe three shades lighter than this original color. And you can notice that I've left lots of that dark color showing through. So I don't want to cover up all of my dark areas, but I do want to start creating some of these little shower, flower shapes. And we're not seeing the flowers straight on. We're seeing a lot of them um, from the side. So when you're seeing a flat petal, you know, say this is my petal, right? Part of it petal, and there'll be four of these in a lilac. When you're seeing it from the side, you're seeing that. You're not seeing this shape. Uh, so you're not going to see this rounded shape every time. Sometimes you're going to have these kind of straight lines where the petal is facing away from you. So just keep that in mind to do a, a combination of all of that. You know, I just usually kind of twist my brush as I'm tapping so that I'm getting all of these different random shapes and using a filbert helps because it's already kind of rounded so you're getting kind of that soft rounded shape um so it does kind of some of the work for you leave a little bit of your stem showing that we put in there before and we're just going to do these little dabbing Turning my brush. I'm not going to define any of the flowers until the very end. So this is just sort of laying the groundwork for the top layers of color. And I want my edges to be nice and random. So some different shapes. Turn. Turning my brush. This area is the darkest, so I'm going to do less flowers in there. Okay. Now I'm going to add, let's grab some of that or, uh, light ultramarine blue straight up. And we'll add another. Now this is where I'm going to start to kind of maybe think about where my individual petals would be where they'd be catching the light. There might be one here that's facing us that we're seeing a little bit of. So we'll do like four petals there, maybe three there. So every now and then you're gonna wanna put in like a uh, four petal flower that that you might you know say is facing you Leave the center dark though So when you're doing this, I'm just kind of drawing in from the outside and uh, creating My shape and These are very crowded so you're gonna You're gonna have all these kind of random petals sticking in around the sides. You're not going to have perfect flowers stacked right next to each other uh, generally. You know, if you look here, you've got this one here, but then all around it are all these kind of weird straight shapes. Uh, there's one here, but then you've got round dots here. These ones are facing away from it. Um, you know, here you've got one, but the next one that's closest is way over here. There's all this green space in between, you know, so you're not. Um, and then these the, these ones here are really uh, there. You're really not even seeing the full flower. They're so tightly packed. I think there may be a double blossom, but like they probably have a like a two two petals inside each each cupping each each other, possibly. So I'm just going to. Go quickly here. And okay, so we're already at an hour. Let me speed myself up here. I knew it's gonna be a little bit longer than an hour, but I didn't wasn't sure exactly how long. What are you laughing at? You. Me. Thinking yeah. that I was gonna get done in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When does that ever happen? Like never. 
Yeah, I can't think of a time. <laughs> <laughs> can't think of the last one. Where I, think I was like, hey, I got that done fast. And you're like, what? <laughs> no, but every video can say, man, I got that done awesome. <laughs> there you go. Brush you drop. Go. <laughs> walk away. <laughs> Stan, hon. All right, I'm going to use white now. I'm going to pick up that background color that has the ultramarine blue and purple mixed in. So I'm mixing a bright, bright purpley blue. And here's where I'm going to target even more specifically. Get even brighter than that. Should be pretty close to pretty close to white and I want to find some of these petals that I think are going to be sticking out the most and add some light color to them so add some more highlight mostly the ones in the middle Maybe uh, maybe our light's coming from this side. We might have some more on one side. So we might have some brighter color coming from over here. It looks like in our photograph, maybe. Another super chat. I'm just doing the light so that you know. <laughs> Thank you. Because you can't see it on the video. Mm -hmm. They're missing the sweet Tesco lights. <laughs> this one's from Sandy. And she says, thank you both for all you do. I've learned so much. You make it so that a beginner can create works of art. That is so Smiley nice. That's, mm -hmm. That is makes my day there. That That's awesome. That is the whole goal. Thank you so much, that's Sandy. It's great to hear, Sandy. Thank you. I do the best I can to help you create <laughs> works of art. What are you laughing at over Nothing. there? Nothing. You, you do. Think of you a... do help because you help me. So I, I'm not. I don't. I don't doubt it. Okay. I am going to can... grab my my round brush now, and I'm just going to use this purple blue. I mixed up some more because I kind of ran out of it, and I'm going to do these little crosses in the centers of some of these, just where I think some of these. I did the four petals, you know, uh, just to add just another little layer of detail, just a few little dots. And some of these we can just dot, you know, we might not know where the center is exactly, but just put there we go. Okay, so there's our one. There's our blue flower, blue-ish. Let's do this down here too, because this is the same color down here. Should have been doing this all along. Okay, let's do this one. I'm gonna go a little bit faster, just to, since we kind of know what we're doing now. Do some random ones off to the side there. Boom, just like that, flower. Super simple. Six or seven strokes with a brush and voila. It is it is pretty amazing how, you know, just the, your eye interprets, you know, because if you really were to look at it very closely, it's just dots, you know. It's just random shapes, dots, and cluster, you know, certain clusters. But your eye does interpret it, you know, as a flower if you do it just in the right way, you know. It's pretty cool how that works. All right, let's use a little bit of... Oh, Quinacridone magenta. With a little bit of white. I see some pink in this one. So I'll use a little bit of pink down here. And so let's, once we, since we've got that pink in our brush, I'm going to go ahead and continue with this one. And I'm going to grab some of that blue. Make it kind of a violet color. And 
we're doing a sort of a medium pink here so it's just a little bit darker or brighter than the previous purple we're just trying to lay out our basic flower shapes just like we did with the first one leaving some of that dark color and going along the outside edge and kind of pulling our flowers out to wherever we want them to be so we may not have done it with the dark color fluffing our flowers out And don't worry too much about your leaves. If you go over your leaves, we can always fill those back in. So just kind of enjoy this. Don't get too don't get too caught up in any one, you know, petal being perfect shape or perfect anything. You know, just kind of enjoy. Sort of try to, you know, enjoy the painting. Painting should be fun. So just kind of try to enjoy the process and. Yours is not going to look exactly like mine, and that's okay. It'll, you know, you're creating your own masterpiece. So, your handwriting is probably different than mine. The way you hold the brush is going to be different than mine, and the way yours, you know, your paint goes onto the canvas is going to be different. So that's perfectly normal. So just kind of embrace the difference and you know I'm just trying to show you kind of the technique for getting there but your you know your actual experience of it may be a little bit different and you may, you may end up with a totally different looking kind of flower which is totally fine and really one of the most interesting things about painting is seeing how people's personalities come out through their art and I hope that you'll kind of Keep that in mind and also keep in mind, you know, that you, if this is your first time painting, you're, I've been painting for 30 years. So, you know, uh, if you were to sit down at a, you know, at a piano with a musician that's been playing for 30 years, we would not expect to be able to play the same as them the first time you sit down to play a song. So uh, the same is true with, the, with art. And I think for some reason with painting, uh, especially people think that they don't have talent if they don't have the um, experience and that's not the same thing so you can acquire the skills to paint um, through practice and patience and more practice and you know <laughs> it's uh it's not an unattainable goal just because you don't know how to do it yet does not mean that you can't figure it out and if you you know follow the some of the tutorials that's the goal my goal is just to kind of help make that process easier for you so that you avoid some of the frustrations that I had when I was learning to paint okay so now I'm adding a little bit of white to that color I've gone in and kind of done all of the thing here some of them are a little bit more blue some of them are a little bit more pink I went back in with a quinacridone magenta straight and added some more of that as this is more kind of a quinacridone magenta and white than the purple color. I'm going to go up over my dark area there. I just noticed I have one that I missed right here. So I'm going to pull that up there. And there's some dark areas like right in here that I really want to avoid. So I don't want to do too much there. I don't want to do too much there. So I'm going to try to keep from covering my whole thing up that's that's the <laughs> that's the hard part is this just gets so fun you <laughs> you start to just go in areas that you really didn't intend to intend to have color so if you do that don't worry about it you can go over it that's just with a little bit too much dark bright color right there
All right, so let's pick out some petals. I see one right here. Maybe that could be a four petal flower. Grabbing some of that bright white pink. Do one up here. Maybe one right in here. And the rest are going to be random. Just edges, little dots, little, you don't really know what they are. Your eye will interpret it. Don't do the work for, you know, you don't have to spell it all out. Your eye will do it all on its own. All you have to do is kind of Get the right basic shape. And your eye will say that's a flower for you. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna get some of my purple. A little bit of darkness right in here. Maybe some back in here. If you if you do too much in one, any one area, you can always go back in and, and add some of that dark color back in, like I'm doing right here. Okay. Okay, I will say that. At first, I thought you were changing up the colors of the painting, of the flowers. Oh, really? Yeah. But now I see what you're doing. Oh. I would have never done that. Never started with the darker color? Right. Oh. <clears throat> and then gone lighter. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, she's changing up the color of the flowers. Mm -mm. It's her painting. She can do what she wants. <laughs> but no. Mm -mm. Nope. Just just the whole idea behind that is just kind of finding the undertones, you know, the darkest colors, undertones of the flower, and then pulling those out. Mostly white here, a little bit of pink. And even the ones that are facing, you don't have to be fully all the same. You know, some of them can be kind of turned sideways, so you might see. Uh, I'll do one here. You might see two petals facing you and two that are kind of on its side like that. So it's not fully formed or fully facing you. Okay. Okay, getting there. Just slowly building up these colors. This one's darker over here. It's a little bit more in shade, so I'm not going to go quite as bright with the highlight petals. Okay, got two more questions. Uh huh. Would you consider this shading? What you're doing right now? Shading? Mm hmm. 
Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, this, this is the highlight part. You know, we're highlighting. The shading was... Uh, really, we were creating the shadows when we were doing the darkest color, the first part. Um, this one is definitely more the highlight stage where we're, we're creating highlights and um, the bright, bringing the brighter colors forward. So. Okay. And then what size fill and bird are you using? It's about a quarter inch. It's a number four, no, six in the select line, Ooh, select. which is there. Yeah, they're a little bit um, less expensive than the... Um, than the one I was using before, the 6100 series. A little bit more expensive, and they only, this is the smallest one they have. So the number four is their smallest, and it's, this is the six in the, so the numbers are totally dependent on the line. It doesn't have anything to do with size, uh, really. It just depends on the manufacturer. Each manufacturer comes up with their own numbering system for their brushes. And obviously, these are both Princeton brushes, and so even within lines, within the same company, the different lines of brushes have different sizing, so. Because usually the smaller brush, the smaller, the smaller the number, so the number four would be smaller than the number six if we were using the same line, but not so. All right. Uh, let's see. My, my footrest is squeaking at me. <laughs> time I move my feet. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to pop out some bright highlights on a few of these. It's, this one has some... Come forward. Okay, there we go. And then the white flowers, let's do them. So, and what? Oh no, go ahead. I'll make my witty comment after you're done. Go ahead. No, sorry. I was just going to say, so when we get your brush line going, mm -hmm. all yeah. the sizes will be in dimensions of fingers. Exactly. <laughs> Quarter finger, half finger, mm -hmm. <laughs> full finger. <laughs> I don't think so, huh? No. I don't know. We know. Who, who knows if that'll even happen, but maybe someday. Okay, well, <laughs> just saying. If it were up to you, we would do it that way. Yeah, because it makes sense. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's an easy standard of measurement everybody knows. True. But what if you have really big fingers? Well, what if you have really big feet? I mean, a foot is a foot, right? That's true. See? That's true. That's true. Good, good point. So you use a little bit of the logic. Unbleached titanium here, or I'm sorry, the uh, <laughs> light ultra <laughs> blue. Mark's distracting me here. Sorry, I can't talk. Can't use my words. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, wade through the silliness here. <laughs> oh, brain function. Okay, I'm going to bring this down more. This one's kind of coming down towards us a little bit more, so I'm going to pull that one down a little bit. And pull some random petals out that way. Okay, let's grab some white and highlight some of these. See, just having these dark and light areas is will create um, movement in your flowers too. It'll bring things forward and push things back. So having really bright area is what's going to pull it straight out at you. So just keep that in mind when you lay in your highlights to do that strategically. Use some strategery and... <laughs> You know, think about where the petals would uh, be closer to you. You know, what part's sticking out at you more. And put that, the lighter colors right there. 
Generally, it's going to be in the middle or, uh, you know, yeah, pretty much just generally it's going to be kind of in the middle uh, area or an area that's facing you that's pointing straight at you like this one, kind of pointing right at us right here. I have a little bit. So if somebody wants to pick up some brushes. Mm hmm. They can go down below the video. There's a link. Yes, there is. The There's a link. Brush down guys. There. The brush guys. Yep. And that's where I get my brushes and takes you to a to a page that has all your recommended mm -hmm. hand picked brushes. Yeah, all the brushes that I use, I use Princeton brushes. They're our brush sponsor, but I was using them last year before they became our brush sponsor. So I contacted them and was like, hey, you want to send me some free brushes? And I'll, <laughs> and they're like, sure. And I was like, good, because I was already using them. But <laughs> no, I'm joking. They, they were very generous. And uh, um, we love working with them. They're, they're a great company. Uh, and they make really good brushes. So I'm very, very happy to be working with them. So, so people have asked in the past, and they actually in this video chat too, you know, what do we recommend for you know, starting out as far as brushes and mm -hmm. paints and the general rule of thumb is the the best you can afford. That is exactly my advice. Yes. Best mm -hmm. you can afford is really, um, because, and then just take care of them, you know, get a few basic sizes. Doesn't have to be, you know, get yourself a large flat, get yourself kind of a medium to small round, uh, get an angle brush, like something around this size, like a three eighths inch angle brush, uh, a filbert is really helpful. So like, like this filbert and pretty much with these brushes here, you could do 90% of what I do, you know, for some of the line work, instead of using a thin brush, you could use the edge of the angle brush for some of these smaller flowers. You could use this instead of the, um, filbert that I'm using now. If you press this brush flat, you can get a similar shape to the, uh, filbert. So there's ways to work with you know, just simple uh, brush shapes and get get a lot of use out of them, you know. So you don't have to go out and buy a ton of really expensive brushes right off the bat. But a good brush will make your painting experience so much better. You'll have an easier time of it. You'll have less frustration. Your bris bristles won't, won't be breaking up while you're painting. You won't have them coming, you know, um, hairs coming off on your... Uh, canvas, you won't have this part wiggling, the sil the ferrule, you know, sometimes will wiggle on a bad brush. Um, and also your bad brushes, or, you know, a cheaper brush, an inexpensive brush, it's a bad brush, but an expensive brush will um, also, um, I'm using white here that I've added just a tiny bit of yellow oxide to, um, will also um, fray and, and uh, break apart more quickly so it'll it won't last you as long um so even if you're saving money in the long in the short term in the long term it'll actually probably cost you more because you'll have to replace them more often uh and and like i said you'll have a lot harder time um of it okay so these ones go ahead and zoom in a little bit more hun um these ones the white ones are kind of our focal point so i'm really gonna take a little bit more time with them and I'm going to create some more obvious petaled shapes with them. And I'm going right up over the top. Some of them are going to just be the kind of filler when I'm filling in I'm just going to do dabs and dashes and things like that but then every now and then I'm going to do one that's like full on 
flower petal like that, you know, where you're seeing all four of them. Okay. And then dab in around them to fill in. Okay, then I'm going to grab some yellow and some tiny, tiny bit of the green and some of that white. Create kind of a bright yellow green color. A lot of white and a lot of yellow. And I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I think let's go ahead and get this this uh, number two round now. Where's my brush? What did I do with it? I left it in there. Okay. I'll be good and clean it out. remember what what video I did recently where I showed how to or talked about how to clean out your brushes but um, if you go to my thankful art group on Facebook I did a I did a whole series of um, how to clean out brushes it's a it's a free group it's just for folks who are interested in you know following what I'm doing on YouTube and um, want to I do weekly art chats in there on different topics and one of them was about cleaning brushes. Most of the time I just talk about what's going on in our lives and chat with folks and answer questions, but sometimes I have, you know, topics that I answer too. All right, I am trying to get just the right color here. I want it just a little bit darker than the white. There we go. And I want to dab in some little dots with this color around my lilacs. I don't want to fill in all the dark areas, but I do want a little bit of this color in and around my flowers. Because you're seeing some of the greener hand little buds and things coming through. Some of them are starting out kind of green. Okay, let's put a little bit of this bright color on some of these leaves out here. Maybe a little bit there. Pulling out some of the details on some of these leaves here. And a little bit darker. A little bit darker down in here. I didn't end up using the phthalo blue at all yet. I think I want to use a little bit of the green here. I'm just noticing that I left, I didn't leave my leaf that was in here, the middle of all these flowers here. So I'm gonna kinda try to put that back in a little bit right here. Just kinda draw that back in. A little bit of the leaf right there poking through. find some shapes a little bit. I 
Yeah, there's some down here we didn't do. Okay, so if you're using this brush to do what I was doing with that filbert, you're going to want to press it flat. Really press hard down flat when you pick up your paint. It'll create that filbert shape for you, see? And then you can get in a few of those petals before it'll pop back into the round shape. You can, yeah, so now it's starting to get round again, so I have to press it flat. So it just takes a little bit more work to get the same effect, but you can definitely get the same shapes as you do with the filbert, with the round brush, a good round brush. Okay, going back in with bright white now. No color, just white. And I'm gonna add highlights to some of my flowers I put in, define them a little bit. Bright highlights. This forward. Put the light ultramarine blue down here on this one. What are you laughing at? Alright, I'm going to use the square brush and my uh, zinc white. I'm gonna add just, let's go ahead and add the phthalo blue here. A little bit of blue. I'm going to add it over the top of my vase right here. Create this shape, but I want it to be transparent. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of it on this side of the face. What do you, what do you? So one of your viewers here says that, says, Angela does tiny brush strokes. It looks like petals. I do tiny brush strokes. And somebody walks in going, what the heck happened to your painting? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know what I can tell you. <laughs> okay, grab some white here. Well, actually, I want it to be kind of gray, so I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue and brown. It's kind of that gray color that we had, and I'm going to add it right there. There, a little bit, just a, kind of a highlight along that edge, and then sort of define the edge of this vase a little bit. And here and here, adding just a little bit of detail. There, most of this vase is just transparent, so you're not seeing any reflections. The only place you're really seeing. Heavy reflections is down here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some white. There's a little bit right in there. Okay, I think that's good enough. <laughs> Maybe put okay. a little bit. What? They want to know if you have a tip on when to stop. How do you know when to stop? When to stop? I usually stop when, um, well, I, I, 
I get it to where I think I like it and then I um, stop and I um, look at it. I, I leave it out and uh, add a little bit of yellow oxide to the centers of some of these. Just a little bit, little dabs with my brush here. Only on the white ones though. I don't see it. I don't see this color on the other ones. So but I might use a little bit of this dark ultra, um quinacridone and purple here and do some centers in these ones. I didn't do that. So just do some little crisscrosses and some of these that you need to define a little bit for the centers. crossy things. Really not a whole lot of detail in these ones down here. the wrong color right there. <clears throat> find some of these areas that are sticking out the most on some of these flowers that are right in here. I'm just going to do little circles actually. Just on a few of them. Almost, almost white, just a little bit of pink in here. Just bringing out some of these highlight details. Okay, so this is all looking like one big blob of color right here. So this is dry. What I'm going to do to fix that <clears throat> is just shadow it. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Burnt Umber and Blue, Ultramarine Blue mix. That was our gray color, right? That's our background color. And I'm going to thin it out with some water. You can use some glazing liquid. I'll go ahead and put out some of my uh, acrylic glazing liquid. But if you don't have the glazing liquid, you can just use water. This is called glazing. So you want to get most of the color off your brush. Just get a little bit of the glazing liquid, a little bit of that color on there. And we're going to strategically figure out where we want our shadows to go. So we're going to shadow over the top of the dried color. Really important that it's dry. If it's not dry, it will, it will just lift your color right off. So you don't want that to happen. But see how we did it in little pockets? We did a little bit right there, we did a little bit right there, and that pushes back that color and creates that shadow area right there. And you can still see the details in those white flowers, but now they look like they're set back a little bit. Let's do it under here, because these ones were kind of dark under here. If you get too much 
paint in one part. You can just kind of use your finger to help rub it off. I'm going to use a little bit of white to go back over. Bring it forward. A little bit of white on a couple of these areas that are overlapping. And boom, now it's all kind of pushed back. We can do it with all of the colors. We can do it with, the, we'll grab some purple. Their glazing liquid. And we'll do it a little bit on these flowers here. So maybe some of these were kind of pushed back. Grab some ultramarine blue here and do some dark. The more paint you use, the darker it'll be. So if you want a really obvious shadow, you can use a little bit darker color, a little bit deeper, a little bit more of the paint, less of the glazing liquid, and you'll get a deeper color. Just be careful that the edges where, you know, where the shadow ends and the other color begins are softened. You know, just make sure that you kind of Brush those so that you don't have a hard line where your shadow ends and the color, bright highlight color starts. So I usually just use a towel with my finger to do that. Pressing those shapes back. And I can use a little bit of this on my vase too. Maybe go over the top of some of my highlight colors. A little bit in the water here. Use a little bit of that to tint the shadows. That vase does not look even on this side. I'm going to have to widen it. the same. There we go. Does that look better? I think so. Okay. Then we can shadow a little bit along here and I think we're about done. I'm going to use a little bit of this gray color. Ultramarine and burnt umber. Water. I'm just going to shadow on the wall right here. Right along the edge of the where that wood comes across. A little bit, one last layer of really bright white. some of these highlights forward. sits back, does the head bob, <laughs> reaches for some more paint, <laughs> goes in, sits back. Yeah. Ooh, we got happening. the head tilt this time. 
goes back in for more paint. This is epic. <laughs> You're a mess. You're making me laugh. Stop. Okay, I need quinacridone magenta. I'm gonna get a little bit of thinned out quinacridone magenta. Add that to my flowers here. So yeah, I just usually look at my paintings after I finish them, watch them for a few days, see if there's anything I want to change. A lot of times there's a lot of stuff that I want to change, so the ones that I've done in the live shows even, you know, but it's too late. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of just a matter of, uh, you know, um, sort of trusting your instincts. And once you get kind of stuck and you really don't know what else to do next, that's when I stop. Because then, you know, you can kind of mess up a painting if you just keep going and pushing through when you really aren't sure where you're going with it. Um, so. Okay. I'm just adding little details. Softening the edges. I felt like that it was just kind of too crisp of edges on some of these. So I'm just trying to soften up the outlines of some of the shapes here okay and I still feel like this could be darker on these so I might do another leaf in here get some of that yellow oxide some of the unbleached titanium or um I'm sorry burnt umber and yellow or phthalo green here and I'm going to do a leaf down in here. a little bit of my really dark areas here so I'm just putting some of those back in around my white flowers there we go that's better okay now I can go back in with my white and just put in a little bit of a few little petals over the top of that edge there leave that darkness in the middle okay I'm gonna call that good Hope you guys try this. It's a lot of fun. Um, hope you do it for your moms for Mother's Day. If you do, you can uh, send me a picture of her holding it. I'd love to see her reactions to uh, your paintings. And uh, hope you all have a great rest of your week. If you want the traceable for this, I'll have it available on my Patreon page. Uh, it's a dollar a month for all of the page, uh, traceables that I do. For all my videos since uh, February 2017 and now. Um, so it's a pretty good deal for just a dollar um, a month. And it helps support our channel. Keeps us uh, creating new videos. And keeps us uh, electricity and uh, internet going. for <laughs> All that good stuff. <laughs> Feeds Mark. <Yeah. laughs> and Scooter over there. He's like... <laughs> Remind, remember the dog. <laughs> All right, I'm just adding. I just noticed once it dries, acrylics dry, you know, uh, pretty uh, dark. They usually darken as they dry. So sometimes after you after it's dry, you can see that you kind of need another layer of the bright white, bright highlights. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding uh, one more layer on that blue. But uh, I think we're done. 
All right, guys, we will see you Saturday. We'll have another video for you. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be painting yet, but hopefully it'll be awesome, and hopefully you'll join us for it. So <laughs> I'll be posting, posting that uh, on my YouTube homepage, and if you want notifications, when you subscribe, you can click the little bell, and it'll send you an email uh, when we do our new videos. But they're every Saturday at 2 p.m. Central and on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Central every week usually. So, all right, we'll see you next time. Bye.